What is going on in the Church of England this year? We are a house divided against itself. Will we survive? Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Rev Dan. I am a vicar in the Church of England. And we're only in March and it feels like we are all over the place as a church. Um, yes, we've had the big general, general synod vote on blessing gay marriages, but there's a lot more other things going on. And I, I, I'll go through them and list them now, starting from the beginning of the year um, and what the future looks like uh, for us uh, out on the front line. And... Um, you know some of the things that I've been hearing anyway so let's start so we started in January and um, if you remember back then as a, as a, a vicar called Bingo Allison uh, who's a male who identifies as a female who uh, I'm non-binary and they say they're the first non-binary vicar in the Church of England I'm sure they're more I think this is a, the first person to come out and say that they were on national TV they won this morning um, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't get uh, someone like me on there. They wouldn't want anyone, someone like me on there. Uh, but uh, anything controversial, uh, and, and they can affirm that it was on there. And um, I'm going to say bingo. Um, I, the other thing I'm aware of, and I'll come on a bit later, is uh, not setting yourself up to, for, to, for the church to come. And uh, yeah, we'll get to that bit. So um, I'll, I'll refrain, I'll just call it, I'll just say bingo. Uh, so bingo is now in Liverpool and bingo says that bingo goes into schools. Um, and um, I assume then that bingo has quite a few schools in their parish because the, rule, the rules are is that you have, um, you have a parish and you have schools in your parish and you go into those schools. You don't go into any other schools. You go into the schools in your parish. So it could happen. You know, in my previous parish, I had two schools. Uh, in this parish, I got a school. And uh, so you could have more than one school. But bingo is going on national TV saying that bingo is going into schools, talk about transgender and non-binary to primary school children. The Church of England is okay with this. Let it happen. Nothing. And, um, you know, as Orthodox, as Bible-believing Christians are like, what? what's going on? What's going on? I don't know if Bingo has more than one school or if Bingo is allowed into many schools to, to say this bit. You know, for the Church of England, it's okay. Um, but as uh, Christians uh, and Orthodox Christians, it's, it's quite worrying and that, that this can be a national thing. So we start the year off there. Um, you know, and you'll see uh, where the church leans uh, on the left or right with, with hearing all these stories. You then um, got the church um, finding out that they've been involved in the 18th century, so back in the 1700s, uh, with the slave trade, with the way they invested money and things, which is absolutely awful. Of course it is, uh, and what happened. But the Church of England has then said we're going to get 100 million from our savings, the, the, the church commissioners, and uh, we're going to put it in a special uh, account or whatever they're going to do. They're not going to spend it. They're going to put it in account and earn any interest they're, they're going to earn. Uh, let me just try to find the article as uh, I press the wrong button so something's going to load up. Um, they're, they're going to um, put that into an account and any interest they're going to then put to, uh, to are people who have been affected by the slave trade now how we find those people affected by the slave trade when the slaves were usually going out not coming to England but going to foreign shores away from Africa um, and uh, also um, just as the church <laughs> trying to do two things here um, as the church um, is really suffering in some places and, and not having the money and not having enough money for, for clergy in the diocese that I serve in. Uh, and this is very much what uh, people have said. If you, you pay a, a parish share, you pay money to the, the central diocese. And uh, if you're a poor church, you, you get what you pay for. So if you can only afford half a clergy, um, 
half a stipend, what we call half a wage, then that's all you get is half a, clip, half a stipend. And that's what I, I did before. For two years, I lived on half a wage in a, in a parish that's bigger than the parish that I was, I'm in now. So that was about 10,500 people. We had three care homes, two schools with double four entry, so there were lots of ch 60 children each year. And, and here there's 6,500 people. Uh, no care homes, uh, one school, single form entry, so 30 kids per class. Um, no, it's no double form entry actually here. They're, they're two separate schools, they're double form entry. So, um, but here's one big area and where I was is kind of three. Anyway, so, you know, it's like, so you put this money and I'm not saying it is a bad thing and just saying, I don't know how they're going to, affect this and this is what a lot of people are saying that the money is is being put out there and uh, um, to seeing the article I got up um, I don't subscribe to this newspaper so I can't see it um, but how do you find them how do you find them and surely surely if you want to help people on a local level invest in uh, vicars um, on the coalface as it were and and they know those, especially those areas of deprivation or those uh, potential uh, people who would be affected by the slave trade um, or, or, or give the money abroad and send the, the money abroad um, you know so there's a, a big divide on this when we're suffering a parish level and, and, and then they suddenly find a hundred million pounds for something that was in the 1800s um, which was bad but um, you know the money could be used uh, to help clergy really affect where they are and um, so what else we got so we got the general synod vote which I'll come on to in a minute we, we got um, misgendering God so at the general synod our elected national council they um, started to talk about a, a question and, and ask, asking should we call God mother you know and a general neutral God and I've done a video on that that's here um, we have then the general sin vote on a blessing gay uh, marriages uh, which is really divided the church um, and this shows you where the church is at the moment that we, we really a house divided against itself you know uh, there's an eight hour debate in there you had a, a, a guy um, who asked the Archbishop of York a question and the way the Archbishop felt he could speak down to this guy and in the end tell him to read the New Testament was quite uh, you know, it, it, it shows like the, what's happened in the structures of the Church of England. No grace, uh, just it really was an arrogance. And he he knew he did something wrong and he went and apologised uh, privately, but he didn't apologise publicly. But um, it kind of, you start to understand how the church is at the top end is being run. And what we also see coming out the uh, general synod, and even before that is... Um, that when the bishops had published what they were going to take to General Synod, they went on um, and did press conferences and, and spoke like it was already going to happen before the General Synod even voted. And and the way they spoke about what was going forward was like, we haven't even voted on this yet. It's it's It was quite, you know, um, it was in a sense worrying because people, people had picked up in my diocese, which is Oxford, of my bishop who wrote a book that because he wrote that book some people you know just thought that the church of england changed their mind already based on a bishop publishing a book let alone uh, two archbishops and a bishop of london doing a press conference and just being like oh yes 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 and it's great and i think even the archbishop of york was crying so we we go to the general synod right? it gets through um and then uh during this time we've got all the uh, liberal bishops speaking and all the orthodox bishops being really quiet except for now Jill Duff who um, is, 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 who's come out and, and, and been on the radio and TV speaking against this but none of the other bishops have come out against this so we have um, the liberals feeling that they can talk about this and the orthodox 
fill in they can't and when I've been on groups and uh, to, to read what's going on it kind of the general consensus is either they are they didn't they're not speak about this and they and they voted and remember a lot of the orthodox people vote bishops voted for this motion to go through to bless, bless gay sex to bless same sex weddings um they're saying that or oh, or in the background it's being said that they, they did that tactically so when they come to revise the prayers and things like that they got more of a voice but how what what, what institution are we in we're, we're in the church why, why are we playing politics why are people voting tactically um and and then and then keeping quiet and not coming out into the public and being saying you know i'm against this i am um, you know i think should be between a man and a woman what what's so wrong with that we we don't all have this groupthink uh, mentality and an as a church, and we and the and the archbishops and the bishops who are all for this are saying that in the church we are broad and we are divided on this. So why 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 orthodox bishops um, not feeling that they are and and a lot of people say this safe to um, say these uh, to say the basic that we all believe that marriage between a man and a woman. It is crazy. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy. It feels like we're in a real political institution, and when you start to have to play games and vote tactically, is 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 really really worrying. Um, Jill Duff has put herself out there, but everyone says she's a not a diocesan bishop. You, so you get diocese and you get diocese bishops, and you get what we call suffragan bishops who help the diocese bishops. So they have an area, and because she's not a diocese bishop, she can she can do that. Uh, some people are saying, well, you know, the diocese bishops, they have, they they got liberal churches and they got to work with these clergy. But it's the same on the other side. We've got, um, you know, in my diocese, all four bishops, or the three suffragan bishops are all liberal. The Bishop of Oxford's liberal, he's produced a book and he's been on the radio and TV about this. And then, you know, go above and you've got Archbishop of Canterbury who, who who's for this as well. So where, where's... For me, in that sense, it's okay for my bishops and the, because I will have two, because I have the suffragan and the diocesan and the archbishop. That's okay for them. But once you get to the orthodox, that they, they they can't say anything, and they feel that they can't say anything. What 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 is happening to the Church of England? And 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 maybe they're scared as well. And this is the other thing: people have said that scared, scared of um, losing their position. Um, and, and, and very much doing this, you know, speaking out. And not, I'm not even speaking out. I'm just being very careful what I say. Very careful what I say as well. Should we be very careful in how we, what we say? You know, we can't just freely speak anymore. Can't free, freely speak. I'm putting this out online. And um, it has been whispered in my ear. Be careful. Be careful of what you say because they could come after you. Come after uh, We're a church. Who... This is not politics here. Where's the grace? Um, um, you can't say in national TV and in papers that, that we are divided, we have difficult opinions. But if how do, if you put your opinion online or say anything, we're going to come after you. But it's a belief and, and something that I, I do listen to and trying to make sure you don't misgender people, you don't go against, you just state facts and, and state my position. It's crazy. It's It's crazy. And so this house divided against itself uh, will um, will not function if we can't find a way forward on this. And if if, if Orthodox priests feel that they're going to get people come after them, and I'm talking within the church uh, because they publicly state uh, wh where they are, then that's awful, awful. So we wait and see. We wait and see. Let's see if anything happens. So um, we we move on. We move on. The the Global South Fellowship of Anglicans they um, sent a, a letter to the Archbishop uh, and saying so there, there's twelve provinces. Ten of them are recognised by the, uh, the say the Church of England. Two of them are new provinces and in, in 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 countries that are, are very liberal, and so they set up their own provinces. And there's other provinces outside who are not membership of the GSFA who have said 
Archbishop, you are now longer seen as the first among equals. You're no longer the e leader, and you and the Church of England is no longer uh, in communion with us. You're the mother church, but now you've you're, you're apostate. You've fallen, and and that's it. The Anglican communion is breaking up over uh, same-sex blessings. It is. Uh, you know, this is massive, and uh, um, you know, outside the church, people won't realise, but it is absolutely huge. This is a fracturing, and and it makes it, you know, they they're being very clear. You're apostate. You're going against the teachings of the Bible, and we cannot be in communion with you. So, how do we do this in the church when you've got some parishes that are uh, orthodox and some parishes that are liberal next door to each other? How how do we, you know, if the if they're not having a relationship and breaking that communion, what do we do? And what do we do if we're Orthodox as priests and our bishops are, you know, it's really, really complicated. And there's what the bishops are offered is not a way forward as yet in this. And um, so the Bishop Coxworth, uh, Christopher Coxworth, who chaired the LLF, uh, living in love and faith this whole thing for the past six or seven years has actually come out and write a letter and um, it says here uh, first of all bishop christopher admits that the process was too rushed at its most critical stage in relation to the draft prayers of love and faith he writes that the bishops did not give the time and attention to hone the response and scrutinize the prayers with the great care that was needed um, and this person writes this seems a most extraordinary state of affairs and secondly, he confirms what many have long suspected, that the bishops working together are collegiate, in that they seek to act en masse and indeed often seem to have collective groupthink, but are nonetheless dysfunctional. After the draft press were published, it soon became clear that different bishops had, after all, different understandings of what was being provided, he states. So you've got the guy who chaired the whole, the whole of this coming out saying, it's rushed, we haven't thought about through this, and we, and we haven't. It, it feels like uh, it was completely the wrong time. You know, we, we're coming out of COVID, we're in a cost of living crisis, and, and you know, there was a, we'd be better to postpone this, just postpone this until a better time. And, and then postponing, some work could have continued on behind. Um, but it was, feels like it was rushed through. You know, for me, in the, in the paperwork, it says LGBTQ+. Plus. Or LGBTQIA plus and so, and and you're like, the, the bishops are saying long term, monogamous, 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 um, monogamous, loving relationships, that's what they want to bless. But then they got the LGBTQI plus letters. I don't know what you call them. The letters there. Uh, and and they don't mix, they don't add up. So what's plus? So this has gone through, uh, and you know, you know what's plus in this? Let alone um, B. If people are acting out the B and they got a, a, a two partners of the opposite sex, T, I, Q. It's not explained to us. Let alone plus. And so this would go through, and suddenly, like, what is plus? You're not explaining this, and and. And, and true right is being rushed through. Um, you're not making people feel confident in all this. So um, it feels like it's all all over the place. Well, as we're going on in the church, get caught up in that. It's a big thing in the church. But so we've got the safeguarding at Lambeth Palace. Safeguarding had an independent company. Ah, oh, my computer's just gone now. Uh, come in and, and look at the safe garden at L Lambeth Parish and uh, now it's come, gone off so they went into the Lambeth Palace and uh, they, they did an audit and it, it's come out that safe gardening in Lambeth Palace is absolutely awful this is where the Archbishop uh, sits and lives this has got a, a lot of administrative function and they're saying that safe gardening in Lambeth Palace is is absolutely awful and it basically needs to get um, up to standard. Now, I've been in my parish a year and before I came, uh, the vicar left, the safeguarding officer left, 
and all the rule, a lot of the rules changed for safeguarding. So I spent like the first eight, nine months just really getting safeguarding right back up to scratch. And I didn't have a safeguarding officer until a few weeks ago. So I was doing all the work myself because this is a big, important thing. This is what's been drummed into us. Safeguarding is hugely important. So to hear this report come out is is like unbelievable. And that, you know, the Archbishop who's leading the Church of England, um, what well, he's his domain, Lambeth Palace, is not following safeguarding or has no safeguarding practices in place. And if we had that, I, I don't know what we would be facing. But it's going to carry on. Um, I doubt if he would get um, a disciplinary or anything, um, that they'll just put it in place. And that feels uh, a bit like you don't want people to get in trouble um, and you want people to get back on track. But, you know, if you've been in position for like nine, ten years and, and this is the state of affairs that people are, are finding, then there are some tough questions to be answered. So, anyway, this is just the first few months of, of this, this year and the Church of England, it, it, it does feel all over the place. Um, and people online are co- just telling us to leave leave the Church of England it's apostate it's, it's fallen you can't operate like this um, and as I said before it is a bit difficult in that one sense but there are um, churches out there who are leading the way um, St Helen's Bishop Gate and All Souls London Place in London they, they're not par- paying their parish share they're, they're 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 leading the way. They're you know that there could even be alternative oversight for them. They already have. Um, they haven't been in relationships with the bishop since last year, but they stopped paying the parish share, which is which is huge. And what's going to happen? Because in in the Church of England, uh, the parish share is a voluntary share um, that we pay to the diocese, but um, you know they 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 pay for the vicar, they pay for the okay, for the the houses, and you know. But there's also the whole question, and it's never been tested in court, who owns the church and, and uh, the buildings and things like this? And, and it could be heading this way. And, it, and it's not good because we saw what happened with, in the States with that. But, you know, things are going to come to a head unless things are, are sorted out. In London, last week they had a, or the week before they had a, 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 a with all the bishops in London, they had a meeting with clergy. There's 150, 200 Orthodox clergy there. And, and it, What's coming out is it really rattled them, really rattled the bishop, bishops, um, because I think it's safer to come out on mass and together and say we're here, and um, so they can't be picked off, but on mass they can. So, and what's going to happen? What's going to happen uh, in London? And and same in Oxford. So said Ebbs in Oxford, they are paying a parish share for what is needed for the vicar and for the housing and stuff like that but they're they're withholding from what i can see the rest of the parish share and putting it into a trust fund and that trust fund will be used for projects around the diocese which are in line with what they agree with and they're also uh, scrutinizing the diocese uh, spending uh, and and which i think needs to be done in every diocese um and to and so that will be really interesting as well with uh, what comes out of that and, and what happens in other dioceses as well um, that where you have orthodox churches and more liberal clergy because you've got uh, orthodox bishops and um, and and, di- and and so will the diocese be and then so the clergy in a sense is okay but um, we're waiting till July now to see what the bishops are going to bring back and what's going to happen but you, you know that the, the the Anglican Communion fell apart like that day and the next day there were already provinces coming out and saying that's it we, we can't have a relationship with you you know like I said people are saying you've got to leave and this is a difficult thing I know people who left and heard of people who left already and so um, what do we do what do we do what do we do you know you get called to the Church of England um, and you serve in the Church of England and you get called to a place i feel that i'm called to this place and and i feel called to the church of england this happens which i knew it would happen at some point but 
uh, didn't think it'd be this soon. And then everything's changing, and yet you still got the command of God, the calling on my life, uh, to come and serve the people here, uh, where I am. And but the structures around you, you you fundamentally disagree. And can you now uh, work together? The thing is, the vote cement something. We all knew that we had disagreed on these things before, and we found and, and, and different people found different ways to work through that. And so you, you just carried on. And so it's in a, in one sense it's the same, but the vote has meant things a change. In 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 my parish and in many many parishes, you know, we're not going to bless same sex. Um, couples because we don't think that is right according to the bible and that's what god would do and so we will carry on as as we as normally will but also in a sense this has made it more public and so if someone comes to us um and this is what a lot of vicars are worried about that they will say no this i won't do this because i, I don't believe it is in the bible and i'm i will hold to my beliefs and there could be a little campaign against the vicar uh, especially on social media and that's for some people that'd be quite hard and you would normally go to your bishop and say look this is really hard can you come and stand to solder with me and if your bishop doesn't agree with you will your bishop do that so it makes it really difficult for a lot of people uh, understanding what's going to happen now nothing's going to change till july but that change will come um I think it's better that churches just get on state where they are. Um, but I have also heard that liberal churches aren't stating where they are either, which is quite interesting. Um, because, again, uh, amongst the population, people out there, that you know, most people don't really care what's happening in the church. They don't really care about the church, uh, to be honest. So uh, for liberal churches to say where they are, there could be a backlash in the population. So Orthodox are worried about what people in their parishes might think, but same with liberal churches. So it really is a mess, and it doesn't feel like it was being handled well. And when you get Bishop Coxworth coming out saying, you know, it hasn't been handled well, and that we're pretty much divided against ourselves uh, as bishops, um, you kind of think, well, you know, this is one of, one of the biggest things in the church, and now, and now you know it's um feels like we're all on the back foot and not just uh, orthodox but uh, liberal as well and where do we go where do we go you know like i say i was listing things through that the church uh is doing and, and how we're seen in the public and you know um i have people coming to me and they're they're not happy with the church of england they're not happy with how things can happen uh, and be so public uh, and that they fundamentally disagree with and there's no recourse it's like we they just have to accept it and and people will leave the church even good biblical churches will lose people over this um over the way that the church is being run and it's um it's a big thing it's huge we're three months in we're heading to july and um, I just hope that n nothing big comes out. Well, we just had the safeguarding report for Lambeth Palace. Let's hope that's the last thing. And that, in the general public, will just go by the by. But in the church, it is, it's sent a few shockwaves. Uh, so let's see when we get to July. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'm just going to be here proclaiming the gospel and loving the people of the parish and, and, and sharing in their joys and weeping with them in their sadnesses and being the light that Christ called me to be for these people and until July and uh, that's what I'll be doing <laughs>